mongrel. The two, two, the 2013 season has seen a number of major issues surface, Gilly. Most notably the Essendon drug saga, but also, very importantly, the debate over equalisation. To help us through all these things, please welcome the CEO of the Players Association, Matt Finney. How you going, Matt? Thank you. Thank you. Finnis. I was going to say, Matt Finnis, like the singer, Matt Finnis. Matty, welcome to Margrook, and good no, to have you back. So. We had you on a few years ago, but you've just come back from the US with the equalisation. I was going to say junk. It wasn't a junket. No, no it wasn't uh, a junket, but yeah, don't, don't I don't think Andrew would be too happy to about that. Yes, yeah, so uh, can you just tell us about it and how it all went? Look, it was really insightful, actually. We, we met with the, uh, the Major League Baseball, um, the NBA, the NFL and, and then some of the teams, the, the Jets, the Patriots uh, and the Red Sox. And really what we're having a look at is what are some of the, the policies that they've used overseas to ensure that their competitions are even. They've got some really big teams, but they've also got some small teams. And, and we've seen some of the, you know, the, the way the game's evolving in AFL. How does, how does a North Melbourne, how does a Bulldogs keep up with the juggernaut, which is Collingwood or West Coast? And, and you know, they're a few years ahead of us. So it was really interesting. So what came out of came out of it in terms for AFL football? Is this something that you think that you might be able to adopt in our game that's going to help that? Well, well Pete, you know, Peter Gordon, who was there representing the Bulldogs, he yeah. he had Eddie Maguire by the arm, was twisting it kind of around the uh, around the traps. But look, what was really apparent is that over over there, the big teams have have essentially shared their wealth with the smaller teams and they've recognised that the game grows as a result. Yeah. You know, this, this idea of any given Sunday, yeah. you know, that any team can win and, and in baseball they call it the, the hope and faith of the fans that your mm -hmm. team will make you know, the playoffs and, and, and so they've, they've shared their wealth. Um, so is that, is that just gate takings that they share? When you say they share the wealth, they share sponsorship? What, what is actually yeah, shared? Look, well in the NFL they aim to have about 70% of all of the money that comes into the game Shared equally by 2017, mm. so that's from the luxury boxes to the mm. to the gates, and yeah, it's fantastic. 70%. Mm. That's amazing. Can you see that happening in the AFL? Is it is that the way that we have to go? Because there certainly is a gap being created right now as we speak between, mm. as you say, the the bottom clubs and the top clubs, and you know our competition can't afford to have you know the same eight or ten competing for the finals year in year out, can they? Well, look, I, I grew up as a Doggies fan, and uh, and my, my team had a major grand final. I'll share there, your so pain. Yeah. We want to um, support them, but it's. Uh, I, well, I think that that's where we need to go. And from our point of view, you know, we have a, a draft, and, and the young kids who come into the game, they don't get a choice to which team they go to. But I believe that they should all have a relatively equal chance of of making the most of their footy career, but also. To, to you know, play in the ultimate you know flag and like these some of these guys have done. Hey, look, Matty, great to see you. Great to see you back in Australia. I'm going to ask you the hard question now because <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you about this investigation into Eston. Mm. Have you seen the SADA report yourself? Look, I, I haven't received uh, seen it, but our, our organisation received it last night, and our lawyers have been pouring through it. Mm. Um, but I haven't had a chance to read it myself just yet. It, 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 so I can't ask you if the players have been accused of taking a banned substance then, can I? Because you don't know. Well, look, what I can tell... Nobody knows. Well, this has been one of the problems the whole way along, is we've got a situation where you've got a footy club, um, the players go there, they put a lot of trust and faith and confidence in, in, in the club and the medical staff, the sports science staff. Yeah. But unfortunately, we've got a situation where we just don't know exactly what it is that the players but receive. So, so, something's come out in the paper today... Ma Angus Monfrey's a former Essendon player that's playing at Port Power. Mm. AFL apparently has said to him he's that, or the club have said to him that he's got nothing to worry about. If mm. he's got nothing to worry about, maybe the whole of the Essendon footy club hasn't got anything to worry about. I'm reading two sides of the story all the time. Yeah, and there's, there's been so much speculation about this. And, and look, we met with the Essendon players today and, and, and we can only deal in facts. Mm. And, and that is that there's no guarantees. Mm. Um, it's a really complex matter. Mm. And, yeah. and you know, we just need to um, consider this report now. The AFL will have a good look through it. Um, but we've got to get to the bottom of it because no player, no player, um, whether you're at Essendon or any football club, should ever be placed in the position um, you know, where, where we can't understand or know what it is they're being given. As any player that plays AFL has said to the Players Association that they've taken a banned substance? 
No, well, what they've said is, um, this is what we believe we've been given. Mm. Um, but one of the problems was, there's a whole lot of uncertainty around, you know, what some of these substances Matt, are. Matt, Matt, you went out to Essendon this afternoon, you met with the Essendon players, is that right? We did. Yeah, what was, are you allowed to elaborate on some of the, the questions that they ask you from the playing group? What were some of their concerns? Oh, look, I, I think, you know, it's important that we respect the fact that when we go and talk to the players, that, you know, what they've got to say to us is, is confidential. I, I guess what I can say is... Um, you know, it was a really serious meeting, and, and the guys, they've been incredibly resilient, I think, mm -hmm. throughout the year. We'd all take our hats off to the way they've conducted themselves. They've cooperated with this investigation, um, you know, like no other athletes have. They've been incredibly candid, um, but it's wearing on them, you know, and, and mm -hmm. the, the uncertainty around their careers, the uncertainty around their health, and the uncertainty around their reputations because of the speculation, mm. I, I think, is, is perhaps... Um, you know, you know what is is so disappointing about this, Matt. The players' association has come a long way since, obviously, Andrew was first appointed as the uh, yeah. as the players' association uh, CEO, and uh, you've I think been a couple after him. Yes. Uh, the fact that you get invited to New York with the uh, CEO of the oh, AFL. We played our own way. Uh, oh, you there, did. We Wayne, did. But, uh, that's a, that's it was a, nice to be included. <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm saying. That's a huge step in itself. What mm -hmm. other than the bomber stuff? What are some of the other massive issues we have? We've just had the TV rights recently. Yeah. What are some of the other big issues right now? One of the big things we've been doing a lot of work on um, is, is what we call um, how football clubs are, are first-class sporting workplaces, and that is how we actually find that balance between making sure the athletes are being prepared to be the best athletes they can, but also that we've got the balance to ensure the guys can develop their skills for life after football. Um, and, and, you know, there's so much pressure around the game. We've got so many more coaches these days and physios. Everyone wants to have a piece of the players. Mm. We need to make sure there's that balance to ensure the guys are still developing. So that's, you know, I think one of our biggest challenges. Now, Matty, we'll just leave the Essendon stuff there, but today you were involved in a program that tackles binge drinking against um, young people. So can you just mm. tell us about the the thing that you launched today. Look, I'm really excited about it and quite passionate about it. We've got the, basically, the players are taking a pledge to, to tackle binge drinking because you know, it's one of the biggest social issues we have. Every week, 70 young people are hospitalised due to some kind of alcohol fueled incident, mm. whether that's in the home, in a domestic situation or out in the streets. And, and that's not something which I think any of us you know, should be proud of or should tolerate. And, so we've had, um, we had Scotty Pendlebury along today, uh, Nick Nat over in, in Perth, um, Paddy Dangerfield in Adelaide, and, and the boys have got right behind this um, to send a really strong message, particularly as we go into the, this time of the year in footy where a lot of teams are they're finishing their seasons or they're mm. celebrating success. And we've seen some, you know, some pretty um, disappointing incidents over the last few years. So it's important that the guys send a positive message. Matty, another issue yeah. that always comes up is should clubs have Indigenous welfare officers? Uh, there's a feeling out there amongst particularly the Indigenous community that every AFL club should have an Aboriginal welfare officer attached. Now, for instance, like Liam Jarrah, he went through a lot at Melbourne, mm. went off the rails here and there, and uh, probably would have been good if he had an Indigenous person at the club to keep him on track. Look, I, I think um, that this policy is, has developed a lot of legs in, in recent times. We, we've done some work around developing some guidelines for, for what a best practice, and this was put together by our Indigenous Players Advisory Board, and, yeah. and that's something which, um, which is chaired by Adam Goods yeah. and, uh, and Jared Harbrow and, and uh, Nathan Lovett-Murray and, and you know, Michael Johnson. These guys have all been involved in, in saying, well, what is it that we can put into our clubs to ensure that our Indigenous players, when they come in, get the best support? Phil Narkel over in, in uh, West Coast is the first full-time Indigenous welfare officer and we've seen other couple of clubs you know put on some part-time I think that's a great idea particularly in the clubs where there's not an established senior player not every young Indigenous player gets to come to a club where your Adam Goods um, is there who can take you under your wing so mm -hmm. I, I think we'll see more of that yeah okay all right well let's go to our next game shall we and it's Essendon taking on West Coast Sunday at the Docklands and let's have a look at that Essendon lineup. Dempsey's out with a hemi and Delilio's omitted for the West Coast. Lacroix, good to see him back there with Prudis, Maston and McGinnity out the side. Carter's been rested, unbelievable. This well, game, that, uh, 
Tell us for an It's a duck lens. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, we know. Um, Chris, have the wheels actually fallen off at this? We, we, talk, we heard from Matty about the pressure that's been associated with that playing group. Joe Watson keeps getting booed every week. Um, but... Even amongst all that stuff, I, I, I think players like Melksham's had a great year, Bell Chambers has had a great yep. year. Do you think the wheels are falling off or not? Well, no, I don't. They come up against a pretty strong side last week in uh, in Collingwood. They were, the, the conditions really suited Collingwood. They had the experienced players. They had the bigger bodies that were going to body line the ball. I think it was just a one-off. And as Matt said, look, they've got to be commended on, on, on their resilience that they've been able to keep through this whole saga. And look, whether they're found guilty or not guilty, to have all this pressure on them and to actually perform on, on a big stage uh, week in, week out, is certainly got to be uh, sort of uh, uh, applauded because because uh, I don't think the wheels are falling off. I reckon they'll come back this week and, uh, and, and prove uh, and show everyone that they can play good football. What, what was your feeling amongst looking at the playing group today? Did they look jaded? Did they look worn down? Or did they seem like they're up and about? Has it taken a toll on well, I someone that's Yeah, I think, I think we'll see them at their best again this weekend. I, okay. I, I um, tend to agree. I, I think that the thing of the competition they've had in the last two weeks, um, they've you know, been right at their game. I think it suited Collingwood last week. I, I think that you know, travelling West Coast um, this week over to here, I think we'll see Essendon back at their best. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where they go, though, Matt. I mean, these players and the coach heard him. I mean, the, the media's constantly, I know what's, we, we all know what's going on, but they're constantly getting hammered by media every, every day. I mean, it's got to be taken some sort of toll on the players big time because it's, they're constantly waiting their 6 a.m. Matt, in the I media just, all the time. Matt, oh, yeah, obviously, yeah. Can I just say, what sort of support is the PA giving them? Obviously, you went and spoke to them today, but is there support for the players? Is there support for the partners, families? Because obviously, they're going through some stress at the moment too. Yeah. Look, look, I've got to say, um, you know, whatever is is the case or the question mark over the club in 2011, um, the way in which the club has, has stood by the players throughout the course of this year is, is being commendable, and, and I think that they've, you know, really stood by the players. They've kept the communication with the families and, and, and bought them in as part of that and and the PA we, we have support you know resources behind the scenes for, for players across all clubs and and that's there for the, for the Essendon players you know to um, to deal with as well but we've been able to work in pretty hand hand in hand with the club this year